Eomani's fossils found in the Messel pit in Germany are very similar in size and anatomy to living pangolins, indicating that pangolins have remained largely unchanged in morphology and behavior for 50 million years. However, unlike modern pangolins, its tail and legs did not bear scales. According to the stomach contents of the excellently preserved Messel specimens, its diet consisted of both insects and plants. Pangolins have large, protective keratin scales, similar in material to fingernails and toenails, covering their skin, they are the only known mammals with this feature. They live in hollow trees or burrows, depending on the species. Pangolins are nocturnal, and their diet consists of mainly ants and termites, which they capture using their long tongues. They tend to be solitary animals, meeting only to mate and produce a litter of one to three offspring, which they raise for about two years. Pangolins are threatened by poaching and heavy deforestation of their natural habitats, and they are the most trafficked mammals in the world. Like all pangolins, the giant pangolin is a specialized insectivore that lacks teeth and the ability to chew. Its diet mainly consists of ants and termites, which it finds by tearing open anthills and termite nests, both subterranean and mound type. Because of its relatively large size, it is particularly well suited to breaking open termite mounds by leaning on the mound and resting its weight on its tail, and then ripping into the mound with its front claws. African pangolins such as the ground pangolin prefer burrows, while Asian pangolins sleep in hollows and forks of trees and logs. They are nocturnal animals. They mark their territory with urine, secretions, and by scattering their feces. When threatened, their defense mechanism is to curl into a ball with their scales outward, hiss and puff, and lash out with their sharp-edged tails. The scales on the tails are capable of a cutting action to inflict serious wounds. Young pangolins ride on the base of their mother's tails and slip under the mother when she curls up for protection. The hind limbs of Measis were longer than the forelimbs, the pelvis was dog-like in form and structure. It had retractable claws, agile joints for climbing and binocular vision. It had a brain that was relatively larger than those of the creodonts, and the larger brain size as compared with body size probably reflects an increase in intelligence. It was well suited for an arboreal climbing lifestyle. Vulpavis were the ancestors of all contemporary carnivores. It was rather primitive predator and looks like Tyra with a small body and long tail. He ate everything he could catch like birds, insects and small mammals. Distinct from the much smaller Monodelphus, the skull of Vulpavis was relatively smaller. It had a shorter deeper rostrum, including a shorter premaxilla with two fewer incisors. Sarcastodon, known only from a skull and jawbones, probably stood around one meter tall at the shoulder, roughly the size of a modern brown bear. Its teeth were very hyena-like, suggesting it was a hypercarnivore specializing in bone crushing. Oxyenids were traditionally classified as part of the creodonta, a wastebasket taxon, but actually seem to have been basal members of the loraceotheres. Although still only known from a few scattered and incomplete fossils, Disopsilus stands out from other creodonts by being one of the last to live. It lived at a time when other predators such as the Amphicyanids when had replaced the creodonts as the top predators of the time. However the gradual emergence of true dogs that would go on to diverge into more specialized forms such as wolves would increase competition to the point where Disopsilus as well as the bear dogs could no longer survive. Typical of early carnivorous mammals, individuals of Hyenodon had a very massive skull, but only a small brain. 
The skull is long with a narrow snout, much larger in relation to the length of the skull than in canine carnivores, for instance. The neck was shorter than the skull, while the body was long and robust and terminated in a long tail. Hyenodon did not rely upon just crushing animals in its jaws however. Once the prey was down it had to be eaten and for this Hyenodon had specially adapted slicing teeth at the back of these jaws. The really interesting thing about these teeth is that as the animal grew older these slicing teeth would rotate against each other. Hyenalaros walked with a semi-digitigrade stance and was probably capable of large, leaping bounds. Alongside its African relatives and the last members of the genus Hyenodon from Asia, Hyenalaros was among the largest hyenodonts that existed. They were an important group of carnivorous mammals during the Paleogene period, occupying ecological niches that later carnivores like modern hyenas and felids would fill during the following epochs. They went extinct towards the end of the Oligocene epoch, changes in the environment and competition with other carnivorous mammals might have played a role. Simba Kubwa probably was a specialist hunter and scavenger that preyed on creatures such as rhinoceroses and early proboscideans. It may have been somewhat less specialized in crushing bone than its later relatives. It possessed lingually rotating carnassial blades, ensuring a constant shearing edge throughout its life. It was one of the largest terrestrial carnivorous mammals of its time. The land that is now the Sahara was much more fertile in the Miocene. A considerable amount of it was grassland and rainfall were plentiful. Lakes and ponds provided water for large fauna, which provided Megistotherium and other predators with an ample supply of prey. Large hyenodontids like this one could have originally evolved as specialized predators or scavengers of large African herbivores. Daphinus, like the rest of its family, was called a bear dog because it had characteristics of both bears and dogs. These animals were about the size of the present-day coyote. Daphinus vetus was the largest species. It had short legs, and could only make quick sprints, it was not capable of running long distances. It is thought that these animals ambushed their prey, and did some scavenging. Amphissian species varied in size, but they were generally large carnivores. They had a bear-like appearance, with a robust body, strong limbs, and a broad head. Their dental structure was similar to that of bears, and they had sharp, slicing teeth suitable for a carnivorous diet. It was a versatile predator, adapting to various ecological niches. They were likely opportunistic hunters and scavengers, preying on a variety of mammals and other small vertebrates. Ursavis is of particular interest to scientists studying the evolutionary history of bears. It represents a crucial stage in the lineage that led to the diverse group of modern bear species we have today. It was likely omnivorous, consuming both plant matter and meat. It was smaller than many modern bears, estimated to be about the size of a large dog. However, its general body shape and features were similar to those of present-day bears. Like modern them, Ursavis likely had a plantigrade stance. Dinocyan is an extinct genus of hemicyanine bear of the Miocene epoch, endemic to Europe. Its weight has been estimated at 200 kilograms, maybe more. Its dentition indicates an omnivorous diet, 
but its anatomy suggests it was maybe more of an active hunter compared to most modern bear species. Hemocyan was about 1.5 meters long and 70 centimeters tall, with encarnacial blades on its teeth for cutting meat. It is widely accepted to have been hypercarnivorous and highly predaceous. Unlike modern bears, it walked on its toes. This suggests that it must have been an active hunter and a good runner, and presumably hunted by pursuing prey on open ground. Unlike most of bear's species, Kretsoiarctos had strong distal cusps on the premolars and a relatively forward-positioned metaconid. In addition, it had a more strongly developed sectorial blade in the trigonid, and relatively shorter second molar talonid. These traits indicate a need for pronounced chewing and grinding, and suggest that these enhanced molars and premolars were evolved to more efficiently break down hard plant tissues. All of this may indicate an evolutionary trend towards more complex premolars for the plant-feeding bear species, and may explain why extant giant pandas have very complex molars. Different teeth structures in the Iluropoda lineage indicate a mosaic evolution during the past two million years. Like modern giant pandas, Aleuroctos had a false thumb that allowed it to grip bamboo, suggesting that the panda's specialized bamboo diet goes back to as early 8 million years ago. Iluropoda microta is the earliest known ancestor of the giant panda. Where patterns on its teeth suggest it lived on a diet of bamboo, the primary food of the giant panda. The first discovered skull of the animal in a South China limestone cave is estimated to be 2 million years old. The skull found is about half the size of a modern-day giant panda, but is anatomically very similar. This research suggests that the giant panda has evolved for more than 3 million years as a completely separate lineage from that of other bears. Giant pandas are easily recognized by their distinctive black and white coloration. Though it belongs to the order Carnivora, the giant panda is a folivore, with bamboo shoots and leaves making up more than 99% of its diet. As a result of farming, deforestation, and other development, it has been driven out of the lowland areas where it once lived, and it is a conservation-reliant vulnerable species. They are mostly solitary animals and prefer to spend much of their time alone. However, they are not entirely antisocial and may have interactions with other pandas during the mating season or when sharing resources like bamboo patches. Not all conservationists agree that the money spent on conserving pandas is well spent, some has argued that the breeding of pandas in captivity is pointless because there is not enough habitat left to sustain them. However, a 2015 paper found that the giant panda can serve as an umbrella species as the preservation of their habitat also helps other endemic species in China. Plyonarctos is the oldest known genus within the subfamily of the short-faced bears, and is believed to be ancestral to the clade. It is of interest to scientists studying the evolutionary history of bears. It represents a transitional form between earlier bear ancestors and more modern bear species. It likely had limb structures that show some intermediate characteristics between early bear ancestors and modern bears. These traits could involve adaptations for both climbing and terrestrial locomotion. Today, considered to be an enormous omnivore, giant short-faced bear is believed to be one of the largest known terrestrial mammalians carnivorans that has ever existed. Studies suggest that it both browsed on vegetation and consumed browsing herbivores. It seems to have preferred open woodlands, but was an adaptable species, taking advantage of many habitats and feeding opportunities. Some envisaged this bear as a brutish predator that overwhelmed the megafauna of the Pleistocene with its great physical strength. However, despite being very large, its limbs were too gracile for such an attack strategy.
Arctotherium was adapted to open and mixed habitat. They are genetically closer to the spectacled bear than to Arctodus of North America, implying the two extinct forms evolved large size in a convergent manner. A skeleton of Arctotherium from Buenos Aires indicates big males of this species would have weighed 1.6 tons, standing 3.4 meters tall, making it the largest bear known. In contrast to their North American cousins, South American short-faced bears showed a trend of declining size and carnivory over time. This has been attributed to increased competition from other later arriving or evolving carnivorans following the early dispersal of short-faced bears to South America. In Andean cloud forests, spectacled bears may be active both during the day and night, but in Peruvian desert are reported to bed down under vegetative cover during the day. Their continued survival alongside humans has depended mostly on their ability to climb even the tallest trees of the Andes. They usually retreat from the presence of humans, often by climbing trees. They are more herbivorous than most other bears, normally about 5-7% to of their diets is meat. The name comes from the distinctive light-colored facial markings that resemble eyeglasses or spectacles. The main threats to spectacled bears include deforestation, habitat degradation, and hunting. Additionally, conflicts with humans, especially farmers protecting their crops, pose a significant threat to these bears. The sun bear is the smallest bear species, standing nearly 70 centimeters at the shoulder and weighing 60 kilograms it is stockily built, with large paws, strongly curved claws, small rounded ears and a short snout. The most arboreal of all bears, it is an excellent climber and sunbathes or sleeps in trees 2 to 7 meters above the ground. It is mainly active during the day, though nocturnality might be more common in areas frequented by humans. They do not seem to hibernate, possibly because food resources are available the whole year throughout the range. These bears are threatened by heavy deforestation and illegal hunting for food and wildlife trade, they are also harmed in conflicts with humans when they enter farmlands, plantations and orchards. The global population is estimated to have declined by 35% over the past three decades. The sloth bear has also been called labiated bear because of its long lower lip and palate used for sucking up insects. It has long, shaggy fur, a mane around the face, and long, sickle-shaped claws. It shares features of insectivorous mammals and evolved during the Pleistocene from the ancestral brown bear through divergent evolution. When their territories are encroached upon by humans, they sometimes attack them. Historically, Humans have drastically reduced these bears' habitat and diminished their population by hunting them for food and products such as their bacula and claws. Asian black bears inhabit a variety of forested habitats, including temperate and subtropical forests, as well as mountainous regions with dense vegetation. They are generally solitary animals and are primarily active during the day. However, they may be active at night in areas where they experience human disturbance. Their populations are declining due to habitat loss, deforestation and hunting for various body parts, which are used in traditional medicine and other cultural practices. American black bears are generally smaller and more slender than their brown bear relatives. They vary in size depending on their geographic location and food availability, but adult males typically weigh between 100 to 300 kilograms they are highly adaptable and can be found in a wide range of habitats. They are omnivores and are also known for their ability to climb trees to forage for food. Black bears are primarily solitary animals, and each bear has its own territory. They are generally not aggressive towards humans, but encounters can happen, especially when bears become habituated to human food sources. During the winter months, in colder regions, they undergo hibernation. They enter a state of reduced metabolic activity, conserving energy while living off stored fat reserves.
Both the word cave and the scientific name Spileus are used because fossils of this species were mostly found in caves. This reflects the views of experts that cave bears may have spent more time in caves than the brown bear, which uses caves only for hibernation. The morphological features of the cave bear chewing apparatus, including loss of premolars, have long been suggested to indicate their diets displayed a higher degree of herbivory than the Eurasian brown bear. Death during hibernation was a common end for cave bears, mainly befalling specimens that failed ecologically during the summer season through inexperience, sickness, or old age. Eurasian brown bears are omnivorous and have a diverse diet that includes vegetation, berries, nuts, insects, fish, small mammals, and carrion. They are also known for their ability to dig for roots and bulbs in the ground. They are generally solitary animals, but they may gather in certain areas with abundant food, such as salmon spawning streams. They are excellent climbers and swimmers, and their powerful build makes them formidable predators. Brown bears usually avoid areas where extensive development or urbanization has occurred, unlike the smaller, more inoffensive American black bear which can adapt to peri-urban regions. Under many circumstances, extensive human development may cause brown bears to alter their home ranges. High road densities are often associated with higher mortality, habitat avoidance, and lower bear density. Grizzly bears are some of the largest subspecies of brown bear. They hibernate for five to seven months each year. In preparation for winter, bears can gain approximately 200 kilograms during a period of hyperphagia before going into hibernation. Although grizzlies are of the order carnivora and have the digestive system of carnivores, they are normally omnivores, their diets consist of both plants and animals. They have been known to prey on large mammals. They also feed on fish such as salmon, and those with access to a more protein-enriched diet in coastal areas potentially grow larger than inland individuals. The grizzly bear has several relationships with its ecosystem. One such relationship is a mutualistic relationship with fleshy fruit-bearing plants. After the grizzly consumes the fruit, the seeds are excreted and thereby dispersed in a germinable condition. The average lifespan for a male is estimated at 22 years, with that of a female being slightly longer at 26. Polar bears are both terrestrial and pagophilic and are considered to be marine mammals due to their dependence on marine ecosystems. They prefer the annual sea ice, but live on land when the ice melts in the summer. They are mostly carnivorous and specialized for preying on seals. Such prey is typically taken by ambush, the bear may stalk its prey on the ice or in the water, but also will stay at a breathing hole or ice edge to wait for prey to swim by. Its biggest threats are climate change, pollution and oil gas development. Climate change has caused a decline in sea ice, giving the polar bear less access to its favored prey and increasing the risk of malnutrition and starvation. Less sea ice also means that the bears must spend more time on land, increasing conflicts with people. Polar bears have been hunted, both by native and non-native peoples, for their coats, meat and other items.